Hey everybody, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Review video topic 9.2 on reducing ozone depletion. So in the previous video we mentioned how ozone ends up playing a big, pro big part um, up in the stratosphere. And so here's how it ended up happening. CFCs were reported to have a breakdown in 1974 and then in 1985 they noticed there was this big hole in the ozone over Antarctica. And so by 1987 enough data had been gathered and ozone was banned globally with the Mo Montreal Protocol. That's one of our big 10 laws. Uh, make sure you look at those. And so the Montreal Protocol reduced that and had us stop using CFCs. So that chlorine was not able to break down ozone anymore. And as you can see, you know, the number continued to climb because chlorine had kind of a rebound effect. It took a while after the stopping of use of CFCs for the chlorine to go through its cycle and stop. So it took effect in the 80s, in almost 1990, and that kept on going. And then as you can see, the ozone hole has reduced over time slowly and has gotten better. So chlorine is lasting up there, but um, it's taking quite a bit. So you know, they estimated that it would be about 1.5 million um, square miles larger uh, today had the Montreal Protocol effect not actually gone into effect. So now we reduce this by uh, replacing these ozone depleting substances with other things. So the first, the main chemical that was doing this was chlorine. So they reduced it and changed it by using hydrofluorocarbons, which replaces hydrogen in there and still does the same thing. So you can still have a refrigerant or repellent. The downside is it, both of them are still potent greenhouse gases. So they're related issues, but um, that's, uh, that's the problem we still have to deal with. So here's some other resources you can use to help you with this, and hopefully this will be helpful, and hopefully this was. Thank you.